Hey, what's going on guys? Jolt here, back with another video, and I figured we'd do something a little bit different today. So for a while now, I've had an idea in the back of my mind that I haven't really brought to life yet in the video, and the idea is the concept of a new Vault Hunter. Right off the bat, this is something not made by Gearbox or even playable at all. This is purely a proof of concept, and I just wanted to bring it to life for a fun and interesting video. In order to do so, I do want to give a huge thanks to Zeta Damon. She was kind enough to make a mod to help the immersion of this made-up character better. So thank you so much, Zeta. I really appreciate it, and you are the best. Anyways, the idea I had in mind is a scavenger character, which will be all about looting and shooting, and he goes by the name Ragnus. Let's go over his backstory. Just like Mordecai, Ragnus is from the planet Artemis. In fact, they are brothers. But why hasn't Mordecai ever mentioned his brother? Well, let's just say they didn't really get along. Ragnus does mention that Mordecai's birds are his only family, and he doesn't have time for anybody else. Ragnus always felt like an outcast and parted his separate way. Ever since Mordecai moved over to Pandora, Ragnus did become a university teacher and taught in engineering. Unfortunately, that was over five years ago. Since then, Artemis has been overrun by bandits and now has become a fight for survival. Using his past knowledge, Ragnus scavenges what is left on Artemis and tries to find a way to communicate with his brother and get off this wretched planet. So there's the backstory, Ragnus and Mordecai are brothers, and over time he became a teacher and then eventually a scavenger. That is the core concept of his skill trees, so we're going to have the looter skill tree, which is the scavenger part of him, the shooter skill tree, which will focus on damage he can put out, and the tutor skill tree, which focuses on the teacher half of him, which will be for survival and also for co-op. So the three skill trees are going to be looter, shooter, and tutor. I wanted them to rhyme because why not? Alright, so you can see here we have a custom skill tree made up here. Now, it doesn't function at all, it's just a visual thing to kind of help the immersion of the uh, video. And again, I do want to thank Zeta for making this. So we have the Looter Skill Tree, Shooter Skill Tree, and Tutor Skill Tree. And as for our action skills, it's known as Surcharge. One of the main traits of the character is managing money and also getting bonuses off your money. You can see here that Surcharge will be your action skill, so press the action skill button to dash a short distance. Dashing into enemies will deal shock damage to them. Additionally, enemies hit by Surcharge will drop money. So similar to some of the action skills we have in Borderlands 3, we're going to have multiple charges. And the idea is you can use it for getting around and dashing through your enemies. Yeah, so you're not going to bump into the enemy, you're going to phase through them and do shock damage. Alright, onto the looter skill tree, probably the one I put the most thought into. Um, and the reason I made this scavenger character in the first place is because we don't really have a great looter in the Borderlands franchise. Like, I want somebody who's good at farming and also has that speed and, you know, just makes everything a little bit easier for getting around. I also made sure to have the skills have synergy with other skills and not just be flat out boring. So you won't see many skills that have flat bonuses that just give you reload speed by default or anything like that. My goal was to have an interesting playstyle and, you know, have inspiration from all the skill trees in the franchise. But most of the inspiration did come from the pre-sequel because they honestly had some of the best skill trees. Anyways, enough blabbering away, so first off, our skill here is going to be Fortune. Reload speed is increased for each stack of blood money. Right away, you can see it's similar to Bloodbath on Krieg, but it's, you know, managed a little bit differently. And right here it says, picking up money will add a stack of blood money. Stacks decay after a few seconds if you haven't picked up money. Let's go ahead and max it out, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. At the bottom, you can see 0.5% per stack. And max blood money stacks 50. So at max stacks, you're going to have a bonus 25% reload speed, and I think that's pretty fair for a tier 1 skill. Remember, we can spam surcharge and they're going to drop money from the attack, so that's going to give us stacks all the time. For the next one, we have Pillager, and that's going to be a kill skill, which you can tell by the hexagonal shape. Killing an enemy grants a chance for enemies to drop additional loot based on your blood money stacks for a short time. Picking up money adds a stack to blood money. Stacks decay after a few seconds if you haven't picked up money. I did want this skill to have a little resemblance to Mordecai's skill known as Ransack, but I made it a little bit different because it's going to be based on your stacks instead. We'll go ahead and max it out, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Loot chance, 1% per stack, and max blood money stacks, 50. So at max stacks, you're going to have a 50% chance to get a bonus item. Oh, I do want to mention too, you cannot get more than 50 stacks. That's kind of the cap for this character. Um, nothing later in the skill tree is going to give you more stacks. The idea here is, you know, get it early on as a tier 1 skill. And, you know, if you chain kills fast and have stacks, you're going to get bonus loot for it. Alright, on to tier 2, we have out of stock. Upon firing the last shot from your magazine, you will gain increased movement speed for a short time. Let's max it out. So, movement speed at 20%, duration 5 seconds. You might have pictured it, it's similar to Money Shop from Salvador, but instead of getting bonus damage, you're getting movement speed. Remember, the looter skill tree is not about getting big damage out of it. Instead, it's about looting and getting around fast for farming. Skyrocket. While airborne, you gain increased fire rate and all shots fired deal bonus incendiary damage. That's another little feature with Ragnus. 
He does fire and shock things, so shock from your action skill and then fire from certain skills in your skill tree. Let's max it out too. Uh, fire rate 20% and deal 15% gun damage as incendiary damage. The idea for this is to change your playstyle a little bit, so if you do make it a habit to jump before you take a shot, then you get a small amount of bonus damage for it. Now, I know before I said, you know, this isn't a damage focused skill tree, and that is still true, but there still has to be a little bit of damage in the skill tree, otherwise, why take it if you're all geared up for late game, you know? Alright, here's a really cool one. Overburden. The more full your backpack is, the less movement speed you have. However, you gain increased gun damage. Also, you gain additional backpack space. Let's go ahead and bump it up, so do that. Movement speed up to negative 20%, gun damage up to 10%, and backpack space plus 10. So per point, you're getting two more spots in your backpack. That is one thing in the franchise that always annoyed me, is your backpack is very small. Also, I wanted something that was a negative effect, but gave you a positive effect out of it too. I know losing movement speed is a little bit annoying, but trust me, there is a lot more speed you can get in the skill tree. And again, you can use your action skill surcharge to dash around too. For the one point skill we have Mega Sale, you can now purchase items from vendors at half the original price. Additionally, your blood money stacks will decay slower. It's only a one point skill, so we'll spec it. Shop discount 50% and stack hold time one second. Now I did make sure here to focus on the end game too, so once you have all the gear you could ever want, why would you ever want this skill for a discount? That's why I added the stack hold time by one second to give a little more to it. Up next we have Arms Race, and I did want to add a few references here and there to the skills. Uh, you can now run and gun. While running, critical hit damage is increased and you have a chance to ignore bullets. We'll max it out, there we go. Critical hit damage, 25%. Ignore bullet damage, 15%. So for this skill, you know, you can use it for combat or you can use it just to safely get around to your farms. What I mean by that is running past your enemies and going straight to your farm. Keep in mind too that class mods or whatever you want to equip to your character to boost up your skills, uh, that can go ahead and give you even more bonuses. Think about 10 out of 5 on this skill instead you would have 50% crit damage and 30% ignore bullet chance. Pretty cool. Alright, this one I put a lot of thought into. Ludaholic. Each time you pick up a rare item off the ground, you apply bonus fire damage to your shots for a decent duration. Your bonus will be immediately changed out upon picking up a new item. We'll go ahead and max it out. For a rare blue item, you get 5% bonus incendiary damage. For a very rare purple item, you get 10% bonus incendiary damage. And for legendary and above, <clears throat> per lessons, 20% uh, bonus incendiary damage. Duration, 30 seconds. The idea here is to be focused on your surroundings. So let's say there's a purple on the ground and you know a tough enemy is coming up. You can pick up the item and give yourself a boost in damage. Uh, it has to be a freshly dropped item, so in the code, once you pick it up, it would mark it off as you've seen it. So no loophole there to get damage on all the time. And here's one synergy, so as you're getting kills with Pillager, you're going to get bonus items, which means you can get the most out of Ludaholic. And also, you're filling up your backpack to get a little more gun damage too. Again, this skill tree is not a damage focused skill tree, uh, that's going to be for your middle skill tree, but some damage here and there makes it a little more interesting. Up next, Bogo. Increase your melee damage and movement speed for each stack of blood money. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is buy one get one, you know, Bogo. But we added red text there to say beat others guts out. We'll put the points in and melee damage, 0.6% per stack, movement speed, 0.6% per stack too. So at your maximum, 50 stacks are going to have 30% melee damage and 30% movement speed. Now, I know it seems a little bit odd to add melee damage out of nowhere, but the idea is to have a little bit of a difference in the skill tree. Like, this guy is not the melee character, I'm going to say that right now. But in the franchise, a lot of characters have this kind of, like, small, like, difference in their skill tree that's not something they specialize in. For example, Maya has uh, Mind's Eye, which gives you bonus melee damage, but she's not, like, the melee character. Um, and also, that skill gives you bonus crit, too. I guess what I'm saying is you can still make a melee build with this skill, but even if you're not doing a melee build, you can get the movement speed out of it. So make sure you're picking up money and keeping your stacks up. Alright, super excited for this one. This is going to be the capstone, pay to win. Melee override. Press the melee button to throw a loot box down that costs all of your blood money stacks. It can contain ammo, money, and rare items. The higher your blood money stacks, the better the loot. It is a one point skill, so do that. And cooldown is going to be 120 seconds. Two minutes. The idea here is to not focus on damage for this one, but instead, you know, keep your character topped off. So if you're low on ammo, you can toss this down and get your ammo back. As well, it will give you money and keep your blood money stacks up. Now, as for the rare items, I feel like this would be something that scales depending on your playthrough. So for earlier game, you would see more blues and purples out of it. And for late game, you would have a better chance for legendaries. To summarize, throw away all your blood money stacks and top yourself off. I think it's a pretty cool skill. One more thing I want to mention is, I don't know the exact value that's balanced for all of these skills. I kind of put what sounded good. 
So I can't really say if these skills are overpowered or underpowered or have any loopholes for synergies together. But in my mind, I tried to make them balanced and this is what I came up with. Moving over to the shooter skill tree, again, this will be focused on your damage. And it will also be focused on buffing up surcharge to get more out of it. For the first skill, we have trade in. Increases your gun damage at the cost of your fire rate. We'll go ahead and max it out. There we go. Also, you might notice we're unlocking a bunch of skills by only doing five points. Um, that's not intended. Don't worry about it. Uh, anyways, when you max it out, you're going to get gun damage plus 20% and fire rate negative 25%. Like I mentioned before, I don't want to have too many of the trade-off skills, but I wanted to have a couple of them. So you get something good out of it and also something bad out of it. However, I do think the small hit you take in fire rate is definitely worth it for the 20% damage. And that's going to synergize really well with certain like slow weapons like launchers or bolt action sniper rifles. It's a pretty cool skill, pretty simple, and it's just a nice tier one to have. Up next, we have Lasting Impact. Increases the damage of Surcharge. We'll put 5 there. And so when you max it out, you're going to get 35% bonus damage on Surcharge. Again, a pretty straightforward, kind of boring skill. You know, there's nothing really to it except just get more damage out of it. Uh, I know I mentioned before I didn't want to have boring skills in the skill tree, but there has to be a few because otherwise the whole character is going to be very gimmicky. And I don't want the skill tree to completely dictate your playstyle and just have you jumping around, sliding, and doing weird things to get more damage out of your skills. So there are a few skills like these, but not too many. Now we have Sharpshooter. After landing a critical hit, your next melee attack deals increased damage, and one ammo is added to your magazine from your ammo reserve. This doesn't apply to rocket launchers. We'll go ahead and do that, and for max, you're going to get melee damage 35%. That is a pretty okay buff for a tier 2 skill. And again, this guy is not the melee character, but you can get an average melee build out of him. Funny thing with this skill, I came up with it thinking it was original, but then I remembered Nisha had a skill similar to this in a pre-sequel. I know it seems a little bit underwhelming, but keep in mind I'm going off the Wonderland's melee system, so if you did have a fast swinging melee weapon, then you can get your ammo back pretty fast. Predator. If an enemy isn't targeting you, you deal bonus incendiary damage to the enemy. We'll put the points into it, and you can see we deal 15% gun damage as incendiary damage. The idea here is to be a little bit stealthy, you know, not always running into combat, spamming surcharge, and just being an enemy's face. Instead, you can sit back and snipe, or you can even get that preemptive strike before you enter new combat. Also a cool synergy, before you take your snipe, you can jump for Skyrocket and get the fire damage on that too, and that's going to make your shot hit even harder. Now we have Blazing Trails. Upon using Surcharge, leave a trail of fire in your path. It's only a 1 point skill, so we'll go ahead and spec it, and at the bottom you can see there, check on this. Um, I wanted Surcharge to be a little bit more than just, you know, deliver shock damage. So for a lot of enemies in the franchise, they are usually shield and health, so you can dash through them to break their shield with the Surcharge attack. And then this skill, Blazing Trails, will go ahead and hit their flash. Not only is this skill good for flat fire damage, but if you're doing a full surcharge build, you can get a lot out of this too. So you dash and leave a lingering fire damage over time. Pretty cool. Survival of the fittest. Out of the kill skills, so killing an enemy increases your gun damage and movement speed for a short period of time. We'll max it out, and pretty simple skill for the most part. The idea is to chain kills and get the gun damage and movement speed all the time, so you are rewarded for playing fast. Again, even more movement speed, so you're going to be blitzing and surcharging through all of your enemies, and it's just going to be a lot of fun. Now we have Pack-a-Punch. Uh, there is a typo there, but basically if surcharge hits additional enemies, those enemies take increased damage. We'll put the 5 in. So max damage, 50%. That's a good boost. Now, I always thought that Zero's Boar skill was really, really cool, and I figured what if I do something similar, but more balanced and also not on bullets. So I slapped it on surcharge, and if you dash through multiple enemies, you're going to get even more damage. I didn't want this to include, you know, pass through like 5 enemies at once and then get like 250% bonus damage. As that would be cool, I feel like some things could be abusable with that. So instead, you pass through to one enemy and then the other enemies behind them will take the 50% more damage. One other thing I want to bring up is you might think it's a small number, not really that game changing. But the idea here is to focus on smaller numbers for this uh, skill tree and not have these bloated insane numbers. I'm not a huge fan of seeing 999999k every time you do anything at endgame. So that's kind of how I prefer the skills to be, short and sweet. Here's a cool stacking game, so we have Brain Surgery. It is a kill skill, so killing an enemy increases your critical hit damage for a short duration. This can stack three times. We'll max it out, so per point, 10%. And in total, you're going to get 30% crit damage. Remember, it stacks three times, so 90% crit if you get three kills. Uh, I did forget to put the time on the card for the duration, but I'm thinking along the lines of maybe eight seconds. It seems like a decent duration and will keep you on your toes and rewards you for playing fast. Alright, really cool skill here, we have Stick Pocket. Hitting an enemy with Surcharge will place a Shock Sticky Bomb on them that detonates shortly after. If an enemy is killed by a Sticky Bomb, they will drop bonus ammo. We'll max it out, and you can see at the bottom, Stick Bomb damage, rank plus 5. 
So the more points you have in it, the stronger the shock damage will be. The idea here is that the shock damage by default on the surcharge won't be like crazy good, but if you buff surcharge by taking this, you would have a better chance of taking down tougher enemy shields. And it might seem weird to get ammo out of getting a kill, but there is a reason for that because we're going to move on here to the next one, Souvenir. There's going to be synergy right here. Uh, when you pick up ammo, you gain a stack of Souvenir. For each stack of Souvenir, you gain a little of everything. You can also pick up ammo at an increased range. Let's go ahead and spec it, and you can see there you're going to get 3% for gun damage, accuracy, crit damage, fire rate, mag size, reload speed, and movement speed. But it can stack 5 times, so 15% in total. Not only are you managing your stacks of blood money and also picking up rare items for the bonuses, but you can also get these bonuses off picking up ammo from crates or off your dead enemies. Uh, Ragnus is a scavenger. He wants to pick up things and, you know, that's kind of the game here. You pick up ammo, loot, anything like that, and you're going to get rewarded for it. Now, one more thing for the scavenger concept is I did not include the special currency. Uh, I guess, you know, Borderlands 2, we have Iridium. Pre-sequel, we have Boonstone, stuff like that. Uh, I didn't include that in any of the skill trees because I feel like that's more of a secondary currency for buying your SDUs and things like that. Maybe I'll make some changes in the future to add something in the skill tree for that, but at the moment, nah. Again here, I forgot to add the stack duration, so I'm thinking something along the lines of maybe 5 seconds. Ammo is plentiful, and I feel like you can get your stacks pretty fast. Alright, onto the final skill tree, we have the tutor skill tree. Again, it will be focused for survival skills for yourself and for your teammates, as well as a few other small things too. Uh, for the first skill, we have Circle of Life. This will be a kill skill, so killing an enemy creates a healing circle around you for a short duration. You and your allies in the circle will gain health regeneration. We'll buff it up with the 5 points, and you can see it regenerates 5% of your max health per second. So this is actually very similar to Roland's skill, in which you can do the same thing. Um, it's just a flat out good skill for surviving, and I think it's fair because, you know, you gotta kill an enemy and then you're rewarded with the health regen. And yeah, for a tier 1 skill, I think it's definitely worth picking up. Next up, Balls of Steel. I want to mention right away, this is not going to be a grenade-based character either, but I did want to have some grenade play into the mix of your combat. It reads, Grenade consumption is doubled. After throwing a grenade, you and your allies gain damage resistance and gun handling for a short duration. Additionally, you gain increased grenade capacity. We'll max it out, and you can see we have damage reduction 20%, gun handling 30%, and grenade capacity plus 5. The idea for this one is you just chuck out grenades to keep yourself nice and tanky, and by doing so, you're helping out your teammates too. Remember, Ragnus has many ways to get ammo back, and you're going to be topping yourself off with other bonuses, and there's many synergies to be had, but for the sake of the video, I'm not going to go ahead and explain every single synergy. Up next, we have Litterbug. Increase your mag size based on your grenade count. The lower your grenades, the bigger the bonus. We'll put in 5 points, and it's very similar to Jack from the pre-sequel, or sorry, the doppelganger, but in the pre-sequel, they give you like a ridiculous mag bonus, so this is a more balanced tier 2 version of it. And I did want to have a little bit of synergy with the grenade stuff, so I figured I would include this. So with that previous skill, the Balls of Steel, you can chuck out all the grenades, keep yourself nice and tanky, and also you're building up mag size on top of that. Dine and Dash. After using Surcharge, gain increased cooldown rate for a short duration. This effect can stack twice. We'll max it out. In total, cooldown rate 10%, duration of 5 seconds. Yeah, you can stack it twice so you can get 20% cooldown in total. Now, the cool thing about Surcharge is it's a way to get around fast and use it for damage, but it can also be used to evade in combat and also get behind cover faster. So in a way, it's a good survival skill too. And again, just imagine if you had a class mod that boosted it 10 out of 5. That would be two stacks of, in total, what is it, 40% cooldown. That's a pretty good amount. Here's another really cool one. I didn't word it the best, so I will uh, correct it as I go along. We have Grave Robber. Damage dealt in fight for your life will slowly revive you. Upon gaining a second wind, you gain ammo regen for a short duration. Yeah, so right here, it's not fight for your life for the next part, it's your revive meter. So recovering your revive meter timer will have diminishing returns and fully reset after staying out of fight for your life for two minutes. We'll max it out too. Ammo regen at 50% of mag size, ammo regen duration at five seconds. Now for Ragnus, I want the focus to be to go out and scavenge. I don't want it to be, you know, ammo regen all the time. So when you pop out of fight for your life, you will have ammo regen for a short time. I don't think it can be abused because obviously your fight for your life timer gets shorter and shorter. And I did not put this on the card either, but it should not work for rocket launchers either. Rocket launchers are pretty strong and I feel like that could be a little bit overpowered. Anyways, I think it's a pretty cool skill because if you're playing solo, you're getting a benefit out of it. Nothing sucks more than falling into fight for your life and shooting at the enemy and they're not dying. So now you can shoot the enemy a few times and get a free second win. 
there is diminishing returns so you could not you know jump into a raid boss fight go down 50 times keep shooting the enemy and getting a free second one every time eventually you will bleed out fast and you cannot abuse this okay moving on here that was a lot to explain our next skill is going to be called electrical bath when your shield breaks, you release a shock nova that damages all nearby enemies. If your allies are hit by the nova, their shields will be partially recharged. Your shield must fully recharge between novas. We'll max it out, it's a 3 point skill. So rank 3 shock nova damage, and 60% of ally shields recharged. It basically makes any shield a nova shield that will, you know, do a shock nova. So it will be good for solo if you're trying to get damage out of it, and if you're playing co-op, then you can help out your teammates with their shields. There could be some cool synergies depending on what your teammates are using for their shields. I don't know, imagine just getting a B-Shield back up for free. That's kind of silly. Bloodbound. Upon entering Fight for Your Life, health files will explode out of you. Additionally, after getting a second win, all of your weapons are reloaded. This skill has a long cooldown. It's a 1 point skill, so cooldown, 30 seconds. And like I mentioned before, I want it to be good for co-op and also for solo. So if you get out of Fight for Your Life, you're going to pick up all the health files and heal yourself up. Where while teammates are reviving you, they can pick them up and keep themselves topped off. And honestly, you can just create blood piles and use them in combat if you need them. Really fun skill. For the 5 point skill, we have Swift Fix. Increases your weapon swap speed. After swapping weapons, your next shot will regenerate a portion of your shields. We'll max that out, and you can see at the bottom, swap speed at 25% and shield recharge 10%. Now, I made sure not to make this too OP because obviously if you could just swap between pistols fast, you could just have infinite shield all the time. So I think that 10% is a fair and decent amount. Also, with Ragnus being the gun guy too, I just had to have swap speed. For the other 1 point skill, we have Featherweight. Your surcharge distance is doubled. You also gain a charge back upon killing the enemy with surcharge. We'll put the point in and surcharge distance 100%. Doubled. So by default, surcharge doesn't go very far, but with this, you're going to double your distance. And again, you can use surcharge defensively or offensively. Uh, with this skill being so good, I wanted to put it deeper in the tutor tree. That might encourage people to spec down the tree and grab the skill. Because I do feel like as of lately, a lot of builds are just, you know, glass tank with all the power. And tank builds have not really been much of a thing in the franchise. Well, besides most. One more thing I want to say is this character is also not the tank character. He just has a little bit of tankiness to him. Uh, this skill tree is just for surviving and not dying. Uh, you're not going to have like a massive shield or massive wall of HP. You're just average and good at keeping yourself topped off. In fact, here's a skill right here called Double or Nothing. Upon using Surcharge... You lose 20% of your maximum shield. In return, you gain a chance to fire twice for a short time. We'll go ahead and do that, and you can see there, double shot chance, 25%, and duration, 8 seconds. So it's another 0-2 thing, except you earn it differently. And remember, you can spam surcharge by default 3 times, and if you spec some other skills too, you can spam a lot of surcharge fast. Basically, throw away your shield, and you're gonna have a double shot chance. I guess it is mentioning that if you are at zero shield, it's just going to stay at zero and give you the double shot chance. So if you do want to, you can go glass cannon too. Finally, for the capstone, we have deal with the devil. While low HP, splash damage is increased. You gain further increased splash damage while in fight for your life. Additionally, you can hit teammates with splash damage to heal them. This does not heal the player. It's a one point skill, so we'll do that. Splash damage, 35%. Fight for your life splash damage, another bonus 50%. And 3% of your splash damage is converted into teammate healing. Yeah, it does sound like a pretty strong skill. I mean, 50% plus 35, what is that, 85%? Keep in mind, you cannot abuse ammo regen for rocket launchers or grenades. Like, yeah, you can scavenge ammo from other skills and get grenades back or rocket launcher ammo back, but you're not going to be doing that in Fight for Your Life. Also, your HP does have to be low, so it's kind of a dire situation in which you have to use your splash damage. And yeah, I do think it's a pretty cool skill, and it will apply to anything that has splash, you know, like grenades or rocket launchers. Uh, maybe some splash assault rifles or something. Uh, if it has splash in any form, it will work. Uh, the idea behind this skill is a really cool trick I've seen in co-op for Borderlands 2. Uh, Maya has a skill in which she can shoot her teammates to heal them. And a really easy way to heal your teammates is to shoot a Topnia in the general direction of them. And that will jump up their HP. Also, I think it'd be hilarious and fun to be throwing grenades at your teammates too. And maybe that would give a reason to use Merv grenades more often because I feel like they're a little bit underused in the franchise. Uh, anything else I need to mention for the skill? Let's see here. Oh, low HP is going to be when you're one third or below. In Borderlands 2, you will see like that little exclamation box on the corner. Yeah, it's basically that. Anyways, I think that's going to be it for Ragnus the Scavenger. So let me know below in the comments what you guys think about him. Uh, I put a lot of thought into this, a lot of trial and error, correcting, and had a lot of people behind the scenes helping me out too. And I really wanted to bring this character to life. And I don't know, maybe I'll make another one of these videos in the future. Now for the big question, will this ever be playable? 
Well, with the current state of modding, I think that a lot of this could be done, but a lot of it probably not. But keep in mind that modding's always evolving, and in the future, this could become a reality. I don't know. Also, I do want to throw it out there. Gearbox, if you're watching this, here you go. A free set of ideas for a character. And you know, maybe you want to add it to a future game. I'm just saying. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you really enjoyed it. I put a lot of effort into this video, so if you did, be sure to leave a like because that'd be amazing and epic and I would love you forever. And if you really enjoyed it, then be sure to sub. You guys have a fantastic day and I will see you in a future video. Peace out.